Now, where the inhibitor binds to the enzyme is also an important factor to discuss. By now, you should know what an active site is. If an inhibitor binds at the active site, it blocks the site for binding of the substrate to be converted into the product. Whether it changes the conformation of the active site or not is not so important because the site is already occupied nonetheless. But inhibitors don't always have to bind to the active site. So there are other binding sites of the enzyme that are not the active site, and we term these sites allosteric sites. These sites can be bound to activators or inhibitors, and, it can alter, and they can alter the activity of the enzyme. And this is what is known as allosteric regulation, using allosteric sites to, well, regulate the enzyme activity. What good is binding at sites other than the active site for enzyme inhibition? Let's recall the two ways we can prevent enzyme from carrying out its normal function and see how allosteric inhibition can occur. First is the blocking of the active site. This can be easily achieved. If I have an inhibitor that is so big that even though it binds at the allosteric site, it can block the active site. It's just like how there are many ways to prevent someone else from sitting on your chair, either by sitting on it yourself, or in the case of allosteric inhibition blocking, putting a barrier around your chair so no one else can sit on it. Second is the modification of the active site. The binding of the inhibitor to the allosteric site changes the conformation of the molecule and its active site. And in the case of inhibition, it makes the active site less available.